What are you going to do about Mary, Bill? Got any ideas? No. None of your business. Well, maybe it's not. So shut up. I'm sick and tired of looking at you anyway. You really mean that? <laughs> You're not nice anymore. Oh, come on, Jerry. Don't let a thing like this break us up. We've been together too long. Yeah, well, I'm leaving, Pete, and I ain't coming back. You sure you never did a single before? I never did nothing before. I'm never gonna do nothing again. Well, that about adds it up. Except for two very important things I know about myself. One, nothing. Two, sure would like to be something. I love you. I can't believe it. You're so beautiful and, uh... And what? Well, you're the first person I ever met that I really trust. Well, why does he think that you're that way? Well, something to do with the love frustration. I don't know. She means a lot to you, doesn't she? <sighs> Dr. Howard, did you ever know anyone in your life you just couldn't get over? You should really find more makeup, no more ghastly one-nighters. This time tomorrow night, I shall be on my way to Switzerland. Switzerland? I'll tell you why. Because while you creeps were busy squandering your money, I was putting mine in Swiss banks looking for the day when I might choose to retire. The day has come. Hold it a minute. I haven't had a chance to say two words. Now, how do you know you wouldn't like me if you got to know me a little better? I didn't say I didn't like you. And how can you expect anything to happen in a barren, cold office in broad daylight? I think we should have dinner together tonight. I love her. Does she love you? She doesn't even know I'm alive. And if you don't say anything, she never will. Now, let's get back to the spaghetti sauce, huh? I don't understand. I don't either. Chris. Chris, now, you, you can't say that. I did say it, and I mean it, Elizabeth. But you have to go. No, I don't. I'm going to stay right here as a commercial artist. And you know what's going to happen? I'm going to grow to hate you, Elizabeth. It's not too terribly flattering. I don't understand. Look, you just don't tell a woman something like that just because you're frustrated. Well, you're not going to tell me. If you're here with me now because I don't appeal to you. I can't be responsible for my actions. I'm a man. <laughs> I did it because I love her. And I didn't mean to do anything wrong. And if I did, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, you fool, you monstrous fool! Elizabeth, if you're not going to listen to me, I'm going to kill myself. I'll jump overboard. H how long? Months. Months? What was your question? Oh, yeah. What am I going to do? Oh, I don't know. Probably go down to the office and clean up things there. The office? Who cares about the office? What has the office ever done for you except overwork you? A man meets a woman. They fall in love, they marry. The man works to give the woman the best things in life. And one day, the woman says to the man, 
I believe it. Just like that. You are really getting to those, huh? Oh, yeah. It's a marvelous way to get your heart started in the morning. I say if you can't get stoned by 12 o'clock, there's no point in getting up. What's the trouble? Oh, come on. It's faint or is it Chaucer? It wasn't too risky when you chose to work overtime. I believe it was May the 12th. When you spent the entire night here in the great ball of China Suite, I'm sure that your wife would be delighted to know that you had a nurse in constant attendance. Why don't you pick on somebody your own disposition? Oh, please, Mr. Barroom Brawler. Don't hurt me or anything like that. <laughs> Mr. Lewis, you are a complete nut. 